Hey guys, welcome to The Market is Open. Check out our website, themarketisopen.com. In this video, we're gonna go over the latest report and bearish statements from Tesla short seller, Mark Spiegel. He actually manages less money than your grandmother, but he's extremely vocal and outspoken about Tesla and hates Elon Musk. He's been shorting Tesla for at least the last $400 or $500 per share. And so Tesla has more than doubled, meaning that he's lost his entire short position and then some, and desperately needs Tesla to go down. Also, sorry, the thumbnail isn't really a crash vehicle. It's more of a reflection of Spiegel's stock portfolio. So let's have a look at all of the latest problems that Spiegel has with Tesla. But first, please hit the bell button to subscribe and be notified of upcoming Tesla videos and smash the like button to help support this video. You can also support the channel at patreon.com slash the market is open. Okay, so Mark Spiegel put out his February letter outlining a number of reasons as to why Tesla is worthless. He says Tesla is a zero, and he's been saying that for quite some time. Of course, he's referring to zero emission vehicles and the massive worldwide trend to electric vehicles, of which Tesla is the leader. I'm just kidding. The Spiegel short thesis consists mainly of four major points. The first is that Tesla has no moats at all and nothing proprietary about their electric vehicle technology. And contrast that to the current automakers who have what he calls an experience moat from the decades of knowing how to mass produce vehicles. And also they have the ability to subsidize losses on electric vehicles using their ICE vehicles. While they can definitely subsidize losses on their EVs, which is exactly what they're doing, as far as anyone knows, most automakers actually lose money on each electric vehicle they sell, though it's mixed in with their other sales so it's difficult to know how much they're losing on each vehicle. Or on electric vehicles that they're not losing money on, they likely need to charge significantly higher prices which simply aren't competitive with what Tesla is offering. In one of our previous videos, we talked about the moats that investment firm ARK Invest believes Tesla has, one of which is battery cost, which is fundamental in lowering the cost of the vehicle. And given that Tesla is the largest producer and consumer of batteries in the world, of course in combination with Panasonic at the Nevada Gigafactory, not to mention the new partnerships with LG Chem and Cattle in China, but given Tesla's scale, their best position to reduce costs and ARK Invest uses Wright's law to show this. But you can see the results of Tesla's moat appear in their performance specs, high range, and low cost relative to competitors. The battery moat is also expected to widen with Tesla's next generation batteries. So I think that the only moat that the legacy automakers have is that there's extremely high barriers to entry in terms of cost. It's extremely expensive to build these massive factories that they have, to have an extensive dealership network, and to follow thousands of pages of vehicle regulations. It makes no sense for anyone to enter this market and to copy them. And for that reason, there's been very little or very slow innovation over the last hundred years in the auto industry, and these companies have been riding the wave of their moats. Unfortunately for them, Elon Musk and Tesla have found a way to bring up factories, cut out all of the middleman dealerships, and make a much better product. So there's no more moat for these automakers. It's almost like Tesla built a bridge and now they're attacking from inside the castle walls. Tesla, of course, has other moats as well on top of battery technology, including the AI chip and miles driven. No other automaker has that, but that's for autonomous driving. OTA or over-the-air updates seems like a huge moat. I don't think people realize how Tesla's vertical integration allows them to update the entire system in the vehicle, whereas the other automakers have third-party components in their vehicles. Tesla is the only automaker that can update performance of the vehicle over the air. Also, a lot of you on the ARK Invest video that we made have said that the superchargers are a moat for Tesla. Tesla's supercharger network is way larger and more advanced than any other network out there, which is a huge selling point for buyers because if you buy a competitor product, you'll have range anxiety, whereas with Tesla, you won't. Even Bill Gates, who has all the money in the world, mistakenly bought the Porsche. And I mean, I know he likes Porsche and he needed to buy the most expensive thing, but he admits that he has range anxiety. Oops, should have bought a Tesla for half the price and twice the range. But that said, I think eventually competitor supercharger networks will be sufficient and this won't really be a moat. But let me know in the comments if and why you believe that superchargers will be a moat for the long term for Tesla. Finally, Elon says that the pace of innovation is the company's real moat. Even though Tesla gives away its patents, as long as the company continues to innovate, the patents are at least one to two years old by the time anyone sees them and is able to copy them. So I don't think Spiegel really knows what Tesla even does as a company. Actually, it seems like a common trend or trap for short sellers is that they're always focused on the financials and they can't see the big picture. They don't understand anything about technology either. All right, so the next thing that Spiegel says is that Tesla has an awful balance sheet and by the second half of this year will return to losing money. 
So while historically the second half of the year for Tesla is actually the most profitable, so if anything, Tesla will improve throughout the year. If you're a short seller, I think you should actually be focusing on trying to bash Tesla for its Q1 results, because I think the Q1 results will be low thanks to seasonality and the coronavirus, which is helping short sellers out. Last year, short sellers were able to take Tesla down off the Q1 and Q2 results. So I mean, I just don't know why he's saying that the second half of the year will be bad. That's a little bit laughable. However, Spiegel argues that all of Tesla's earnings from the fourth quarter of 2019 came from the sale of regulatory emission credits. Tesla made $133 million from credits in the quarter and only earned $105 million of GAAP earnings, $386 million of non-GAAP earnings. So yeah, it's interesting that these credits come from other automakers, and they are going to keep coming since it's cheaper to pay Tesla than it is to pay regulatory fines for their polluting fleets. However, they're effectively subsidizing Tesla's vehicles, and this is going to continue. That said, if someone is giving you free money, it's still money. And in addition to that, Spiegel argues that Tesla's revenue was up just 2% from the previous year, and a full year loss was $862 million. He says, yet somewhere out there is a mass of idiots bidding this stock to the moon because they think it's a hyper-growth company. Again, I think it's easy to find some data points to support anything you want. There's definitely negative and positive things happening here, and he presents only the negative ones. But although Tesla's revenue wasn't up much, the number of deliveries increased from 90,000 to 112,000 vehicles. But at the same time, it's hard for Wall Street analysts to understand this, but Tesla is trying to lower the price to make the vehicle more affordable and more accessible to more people. So in 2018, they were selling the high-end models only, and now they're selling the lower-end ones as well. Everyone thought they wouldn't be able to do that, and here we are. So we're also forgetting the short seller arguments from the prior year. In terms of vehicles sold, again, he's right, that doesn't sound like hyper growth, but of those numbers, Model 3 deliveries increased from about 63,000 in Q4 of 2018 to 90,000 in Q4 of 2019, which is about 50% growth. So you can say that's great, but the Model S and X took a hit, and those are more profitable vehicles. But at the same time, Model 3 is the one aimed at the mass market, and that vehicle has been selling quite well. Furthermore, Tesla's run rate in the last quarter was quite impressive, over 8,000 cars per week. So they're also well positioned with the Shanghai factory and Model Y starting to be produced at pretty much the same time, which is all going to be incremental. So although looking at the past financials is nice, investors are always thinking about the future, and the setup for Tesla is why I think the stock has run up. The next best thing that Spiegel says is about Model Y's March launch, which is that the demand for this car is going to be disastrous, and it's going to cannibalize the Model 3. So first of all, Tesla is about six months early with the Model Y. I think this might be the most anticipated vehicle of all time as well. So many people have been waiting for the Model Y, it's not even funny. So I'm highly confident that Elon Musk is right, and it will outsell the S3 and X combined. And the reason for that is simply that SUVs or crossovers are way more popular than sedans. So Spiegel is just dead wrong on that. If he's serious about no demand argument, then he's going to get wiped out. I think the larger concern for investors is that Model Y will cannibalize Model 3, so I have two main arguments against that. The first is that I don't think it will because, like Elon Musk has said before, one's a sedan and one's an SUV. If you look at the current vehicle market, it's not like SUVs have completely cannibalized sedans. There's just less sedans being sold and some people prefer them. At the same time, the overall market for electric vehicles is growing, and so I think Model 3 will continue to grow. When the Model X crossover SUV came out, it actually boosted the sales of the Model S. So nobody knows yet if that will happen again, but keep in mind, and I've said this before, but when Tesla sells more vehicles, it's like they're deploying more salespeople because each owner loves to talk about their Tesla. Also, there's some countries that prefer smaller vehicles. Secondly, even if the Model Y completely cannibalized Model 3, like if you replaced all 367,000 Model 3s sold this year with Model Ys, that would actually be amazing for Tesla because the cost of producing this vehicle is about the same as the Model 3 and the price will be about $5,000 higher. So I calculate that Tesla would have made an additional $1.8 billion this year for profit. So I think that's actually the worst case. It will be interesting to see if the Model Y simply adds on to Model 3's success. Related to that, Spiegel says that Tesla is a busted growth story. He thinks the Q4 Audi e-tron, the BMW iX3, the Mercedes EQB, the Volvo XC40 will crush Tesla. Well, I've been hearing this for years. To me, it just sounds like a bunch of random numbers and letters. And I think these brands are slowly going to disappear and become irrelevant. Kind of like today, you might find the Apple iPhone, the Samsung Galaxy is pretty popular. And what about the Nokia? No. Plus the auto market is extremely fragmented, meaning that there's a lot of players, 
And I think that comes with a lot of confusion and noise, mainly noise. It's exactly the way the phone industry was before Apple. So I think the way to differentiate yourself in the coming years will be specs. Just like how Apple had the thinnest and fastest phones, we'll see the most range per dollar, supercharger infrastructure, etc. Pretty much the moats that we talked about. And then at the same time, but also further into the future, software will be the key differentiator. And none of these other automakers seem to have software expertise. With Tesla, we're already seeing things like sentry mode, dog mode, autonomous driving features, and OTA updates that automakers don't have. So I think the competition is going to continue to be ignored because Tesla has already started to play the software game and no one else knows where to begin. One hilarious point that Spiegel brings up is that if you think China will help Tesla grow, you're wrong because there's no demand in China. Here's the calculation to prove it. So currently Tesla sells 30,000 Model 3s into China. However, they've built this new factory capable of 150,000 annual capacity in terms of vehicles. And Spiegel even thinks that this will go to 1.5 million in two years from now, which I think he must be joking about because that's extremely bullish. Anyways, a great rule of thumb, he says, is that for every 1% price cut, sales increase by 2.4%. So because the China factory will save Tesla on tariffs and taxes, he estimates that a 33% total decrease in price will occur just from that alone. I'm not sure if he took into consideration that the current Model 3s were made much more expensively in the US and now they're being made uh, more cheaply in China. But anyways, let's go with his numbers. So he says that with the China factory, there's effectively a 33% price cut when we're talking about Tesla's cars. So we multiply that by his rule of thumb. So we should see a 79% increase in sales which means the 30,000 vehicles turns into 54,000 vehicles, which is still way lower than the factory capacity, and therefore Tesla doesn't have enough demand. So this is Spiegel's argument, that even with the decrease in price and the increased demand, there still will be nowhere near as much demand as they need to satisfy that 150,000 vehicle capacity. So here's the problem with linear thinkers. Let's pretend that Tesla cut the price by 100% instead of 33%. So they're gonna give away the cars for free. Now let's run through his model. So 100% times his rule of thumb of 2.4% is 240%, and a 240% increase on 30,000 of sales is only 102,000 vehicles, which is still way less than the factory can produce. So again, there's a demand shortage, even if Tesla gave away the cars for free. So yeah, that makes no sense at all. So 25 million cars were actually sold in China last year, and a bit over 1 million of them were electric vehicles. So why don't we look at that market instead? Tesla has been fighting off competitors with both hands tied behind its back. Now they're going to be on a level playing field in terms of taxes and tariffs. I also think that many people held off on their buying decisions in anticipation of the factory being built, which was known about a year ago. So I think there's going to be a flood of new orders coming out of China at some point this year, and 150,000 vehicles won't be enough to satisfy this enormous market. Spiegel also mentions that the Cybertruck is a joke and it won't be any kind of growth engine for the company. As far as I can remember, the Model 3 had about 400,000 reservations at $1,000 a piece. They lowered the price to $100 uh, for the Cybertruck and that got over 550,000 reservations, more than the Model 3. A lot of people actually dropped out for the Model 3 and then organic demand ended up taking over. So I don't really care about the reservation numbers. There's actually not much of a point of reserving because by the time Tesla reaches volume production, the reservation orders are, are fulfilled around the same time as the new orders. So I think people will drop out, but then when the car hits the road, a whole new slew of organic demand will come with it. Finally, the number four reason to short the stock is that Elon Musk is a securities fraud committing pathological liar, according to Spiegel. The first reason for this is that Elon Musk said on the conference call that Tesla wouldn't do a capital raise, and then two weeks later, Tesla did. So my question is, is he allowed to change his mind? Also, the stock price increased by about $200 per share over those two weeks. And I think shareholders were actually quite happy with that capital raise decision. It was way better, about three times better, than the capital raise they did at $240 per share. This time around, they only diluted shareholders by about 1.5%, which isn't very much, to increase the cash position by 30%. So I think Spiegel is upset that the capital raise actually sent the stock even higher. It went to $900 even after the capital raise was at $767 per share, which is abnormal for a stock. Furthermore, Spiegel says that full self-driving is fraudulently named because it doesn't do that, and Elon Musk can recognize $500 million of related deferred revenue, which will turn money-losing quarters in the future into positive ones with paper profit. Okay, but earlier Spiegel was upset because Tesla was getting free emission credit money and now he's mad that Tesla already has full self-driving money and can start recognizing it on the income statement. 
So unfortunately for him, that's the nature of accounting. He also says that autopilot is dangerous, but actually the data shows that it's multiple times safer than just a human. So to try to summarize his argument, I think that his biggest argument is that full self-driving isn't here yet, and therefore Musk is a liar. He promised feature complete and he's late. So I think by now, if you haven't figured out this Elon time thing, it's like fool me once, shame on you, fool me twice, shame on me. So yeah, for full self-driving, no one thinks it can happen for another 10 to 20 years. Elon is saying one year. What about two to three years? Does that sound reasonable? So I think he's for sure going to be late, but if he beats out everyone else by a few years, then it's really game over for them. I think Tesla's made the most progress out of anyone else with their AI chip, the number of real world miles that they have driven, their new dojo training computer, and 3D labeling, which are both coming soon. So I don't see competitors even talking about this. Also, for the people that bought the full self-driving feature, I think there's an expectation that the feature will come out when Tesla thinks it's ready. And the advantage of buying early is saving on the price, which continues to increase with every new feature that they release. So clearly people want this and are willing to pay for this. And so Spiegel is just upset that the stock isn't going down, but the fundamentals tell a different story. So just because you don't like the CEO isn't enough reason to short the stock. I'm excited to see how much more Spiegel can lose. He did say that he covered a little bit as the stock was going up, and he did have some puts on the stock for some short-term trading. But I think long-term, betting against some of the largest trends in history and the leader in the space is a pretty dumb idea. But let me know in the comments what you think. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Please hit the bell button to subscribe and be notified of upcoming Tesla videos, and smash the like button to help support this video. You can also support the channel at patreon.com slash the market is open. Thanks so much for watching.